I'm Diane Sayre. I am the New Jersey representative of the LaRouche slate of six candidates for the U.S. House of Representatives. I am here at the conclusion of extremely lengthy energy master plan hearings of the Governor Christie administration, and I would say that master plan is definitely the right name or maybe final solution. I have never been in a room, I think 300 people or so, who are so desirous of bringing about the extinction of the human species from the planet, with maybe three or four exceptions. Myself, a LaRouche PAC uh, associate, Dr. Ernest Shapiro, who spoke on the point of energy flux density and therefore the necessity of nuclear power, one man who was bold enough to call for nuclear power, and you actually had one young physics teacher uh, promoting Schellenhuber's idea that we should be completely free from fossil fuels altogether by 2050. You had people getting up and saying there should be mandates on how much energy you're allowed to consume and that we have to reduce consumption. This absolutely flies in the face of the natural development of the biosphere, which is absolutely not entropic and does not um, cohere with the fraudulent second law of thermodynamics. So I spoke, and uh, I'm not sure it was all that well received, but I did get copies of my testimony to the panelists. I think for anyone sane in there, it was refreshing to hear someone telling the truth. And all I can say is that LaRouche was totally right in his webcast on the criminality, the genocidal, homicidal nature of the environmentalist movement, and that I would urge everybody to take the statement of my colleague, Keisha Rogers, uh, on the urgent necessity of getting Glass-Steagall reinstated right now so we can launch an energy dense industrial recovery and obviously that demands the necessity of removing Governor Chris Christie's skinny clone from the White House President Barack Obama who must be impeached or removed under the section 4 of the 25th amendment immediately. We're here today to make comments on New Jersey's draft Energy Master Plan, which was released by the governor on June 7th. This is the first of three hearings that we will host. Good afternoon. Good evening. Thank you for extending these hearings. Um, I am Diane Sayre, and I am part of a national slate of six LaRouche Democrats for U.S. House of Representatives. I reside in Hackensack. I'm here today because the implications of the conclusions of Governor Christie's draft energy master plan are far-reaching and genocidal. Let me just situate my comments by pointing out that 12 million people in the Horn of Africa are currently threatened with death by starvation. In the United States, for the first time, life expectancy is declining. Governor Christie's green energy role model, President Barack Obama, has a so-called science advisor, John Holdren, who is an advocate of the anti-scientific position that the world can only sustain one billion people and internationally, a report has recently been released by a German government science advisor who has the dubious honor of having been knighted by the Queen, Hans Joachim Schellenhuber, which calls for establishing new supranational bodies to force the reduction of global dependence on fossil fuels while excluding the use of nuclear power thereby mandating a radical reduction in both energy and food consumption. These policies are already having the genocidal results their authors intend. Furthermore, there is a financial component of this criminal insanity. While the cost of the state and the nation of going with wind and solar power will be beyond measure, 
for no net energy gain. For some, like Christie's brother and Obama's Wall Street and London patrons, there is a fantasy of much money to be made in futures betting, carbon swapping and trading in the dying days of the global financial system. Therefore, I would like to relieve the panelists and the audience of the burden of laboring under the murderous disinformation promoted by today's environmentalist movement so that you can come to a non-genocidal conclusion of how to address New Jersey's energy needs. Number one, the second law of thermodynamics is a fraud. Number two, carbon dioxide is not a pollutant. Number three, there is no such thing as man-made global warming, and in fact, we are most likely headed for a period of global cooling, which is also not caused by human activity. Now, on the first point on thermodynamics, uh, the doctor referenced the development of mammals that saves me going through a billion years of evolution. So we'll skip that, but the point is the natural progression is for higher levels of energy flux density, greater amounts of energy packed into smaller areas. It is from this standpoint that solar and wind energy are actually destructive of the biosphere because they violate that principle. For this reason, they are a form of pollution. On the carbon dioxide question, first of all, the oceans produce over 50% of the carbon dioxide on the planet. Secondly, it would be absurd for breathing to be destructive of the environment. Thirdly, there is no proof that levels of carbon dioxide correlate with increases in temperature. However, on this point on global warming, there is very clear evidence that cloud cover is directly related to the Earth's temperature and that cosmic rays are the key factor in cloud formation. I will submit the charts from the Danish scientist Benzmark that show an extremely high, almost one-to-one -one statistical correlation between the activity of our sun which prevents intergalactic cosmic rays from hitting our atmosphere and forming clouds and the Earth's temperature. Although much more research needs to be done on the relationship between solar and intergalactic cycles and climate, studies from three independent American institutions, as well as others internationally, indicate that we are most likely headed for a period of global cooling. In a few years, Al Gore may prefer to be remembered for assaulting his massage therapist rather than his movie. Furthermore, the cost of solar and wind power is absolutely prohibitive as compared to the cost of much more abundant and reliable energy from nuclear power. Of course, if you use less energy, you will spend less money on energy. Voila! Living in a cave does not cost much in dollar amounts, but it does cost a lot in terms of longevity. What makes Governor Christie's energy master plan draft genocidal is that a result, as a result of the aforementioned disinformation, it calls for reducing energy consumption, where the natural course for the planet would be to increase energy consumption, not arbitrarily, but as FDR did when he built the TVA or launched the Rural Electrification Administration. By how many orders of magnitude did our food production increase because of electric light bulbs and refrigerators? My recommendation to this panel is that you immediately commission the experts in the Princeton Physics Department. This is the last sentence to develop a nuclear fusion propelled rocket, which would be very high energy flux density, with the propulsion power to lift both the corpulence of our governor and the ego of our president and send them to a far off planet. Thank you.